Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we're doing another spotlight on plugins. We're going to talk about the TG Tools Process Extracted Parts plugin, which is in the plugins menu under the TG Tools sub menu here. This is part of the TG Tools plugin suite light that comes with Finale, and it's this one here, Process Extracted Parts. But before I even get into that, I want to talk about the context of what this is actually used for and what it's useful for. So if you've been following along in the Missing Linked Parts series of videos, the last thing that we did had to do with uh, the specify voicing function in the Manage Parts window. Now this window allows you to uh, separate out uh, individual parts from shared staff. So your Flute 1-2 line here, which shares a staff, can have two separate linked parts that use this staff that, um, and you can set it up so that the Flute 1 notes will appear in the Flute 1 part and the Flute 2 notes in the Flute 2 part staff, etc. Now that that little uh, uh, edit voicing windows gets a little complicated. It uses a lot of if then logic, and sometimes that logic kind of breaks down when it's when things start to get really complicated. Uh, in particular, if you have a, a you know a line like this where you're actually sharing four different parts on a single staff, um, that if then logic can almost be unusable in some cases. Uh, same thing with the trumpet in B flat one, two, and three. So. The backup plan for doing things like this is to do this in a separate way or a different way, which is to use dummy staffs that um, for the individual parts. And that's where we left off with that last lesson. I showed you how to do that. And really quick, just to kind of summarize, what I did was I went into the score manager and for a below horn five, uh, six, and seven, eight, I added four individual horn parts, five, six, seven, eight, which are hidden in the score. Same thing with trumpet. There's three hidden staffs. Now, of course, we know we can hide staffs by going into the staff tool, double clicking to get to the staff attributes, and using this option here called force hide staff. And I won't do it here, but in my horn in F5, you'll see that four side staff uh, in score only and collapse is checked. And that's the case for all of these horns and the three trumpets below the main trumpet part here. Now, what this means is that those uh, parts are actually hidden from the score. However, we can always use hidden parts or hidden staffs in the linked parts. So in my Manage Parts window, I actually have linked parts that are set up using these hidden staffs. So Horn and F5 is using Horn and F5 five hidden staff, etc. right? This Horn and F5, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8 combines uh, part, I eventually won't need because I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to print a part that has all four uh, parts on it. And of course, we know when we're dealing with hidden staffs, we won't see them in page view, but they will appear in scroll view. And this is where we're going to have to go in and edit these uh, individual staffs. Now, I have a nice little uh, staff set set up here. So you're only seeing those uh, horns and trumpets here, which is why you're not seeing the rest of the score in scroll view. But uh, so this is where we're going to start. This is the context for this particular plugin. And basically, the way that we're going to start doing this is we're going to copy the combined staff into all of the other staffs, just like that. And I'll do that for the trumpet as well. There we go. So this is where we start. And then the idea is that in each staff, we want to eliminate the parts that we don't need. So for the horn in, in F5, we want to eliminate all but the top line. Now we could do this manually using the you know speedy entry or simple entry, but that's, as you can imagine, going to get tedious very quickly. There are some other plugins that can help with this, including one of my uh, favorite plugins, the JW Plugins. Uh, staff polyphony plugin. There are some tools for parsing out layers. You can keep a single layer. Uh, we can also keep and drop uh, chord lines with it, with this plugin. But this is not the most ideal uh, tool for this particular scenario. There's also the JW Lewis scripts that are very similar, kind of related to that. Uh, the chord lines, delete bottom notes, delete top, keep uh, bottom, and keep top notes. JW Lewis scripts. If you have those, they can be used. For some occasions, and actually it's pretty quick, particularly that, that JW Lua for certain things, but the uh, the TG Tools Process Extracted Parts plugin is sort of a one-stop shop for this type of uh, work, this very specific type of work that you're doing here. So let's go into the Process Extracted Parts plugin and check out what this will do. 
And actually, before I even do that, I'm going to mention one more thing is that you do have to realize that once you do this, you have these dummy staffs with the individual lines. They are no longer essentially linked to the main line that you see in your score. So if you were to come back later and edit this horn 5678 line by changing some notes, changing some chords around, that will not get reflected in these lines. They're not linked. So you would have to make the, uh, the, the edits twice. That's sort of the disadvantage of doing it this way as opposed to the specify voicing option in the manage parts window. But sometimes you don't really have a choice. Sometimes it just gets too complicated for that logic. So let's see exactly how this works. So straight out of the box, uh, you have the default setting set up. And it's kind of simple to use uh, in certain circumstances anyway. You can choose the extract voice line number one. And for the horn in F5, that's exactly what we want to do because we want to take the top note for all four of these measures. And that would work perfectly. You can see that if you track along the way that I have this written out, the uh, horn five part is the top note. So this is really easy. We want to make sure we keep single notes and press go. And you'll see just the top line on all four of those bars gets uh, kept, right? Really easy. We can do the same with horn in F8. Uh, horn in F8 because this is the bottom line. But we can do, instead of counted from top, we can do count from bottom, uh, extract one uh, voice line number one counted from bottom. The difference here is that we don't want to see the, the fourth um, measure appear because as you can see the way I have it written, that's just supposed to be for five and seven. So we can uncheck the keep single notes for uh, horn, uh, horn eight here and press go and you'll see that you will not get that little uh, that fourth measure in the eighth horn. Now something weird happens with this plugin that I've noticed recently is that when you do that, sometimes you lose expression. So you do have to keep a very careful eye on how this works and just make sure that you're paying attention to things so you don't get so you don't lose them in the score version of this uh, this horn and F uh, line here. All right, so now we get into uh, six and seven here, which get a little bit more complex because as you can see, the way that the the notes are split between each measure sort of changes. So this is where we're going to start using the custom settings here. Now what this does is this literally says um, from from three note chords, five note chords, four note chords, we can choose the voice from that particular voicing to uh, extract here. So. If we're looking at this and we're looking at uh, horn six, we're going to say, okay, the first measure in a four note chord, we want the second line. So just start here. We'll go uh, from four notes. We want the second line from the three note chord. We want the top line, right? So in that case, we'll put one and in a two note chord, which is this one from two notes, extract note number one, um, we want the top one, right? And again, uh, horn six is not supposed to play that fourth measure, so we'll make sure that we don't have keep single notes checked. And what this should do is give us the horn six line, right? And there it goes. And of course, we lost our little five seven marking there again, but that's okay. We'll get that back. Um, and then we can look at the horn in seven line. And in this case, from the four note chords, we want the third note. So over here, we're going to put three. From three note chords, we actually want the second note, right? If you're following the, the texts that I have here. And from two note chords, we want the second line, right? Because this horn seven is a second line. And we do want that single line because originally uh, this is supposed to be horns five and seven, right? So if we check, if we set up our custom settings this way, we will get uh, horn line seven, all right? So that's sort of what's going on. You have a lot of uh, different ways to parse out the, the voicings uh, based on how many uh, notes are in each chord in each measure. And as you can imagine, you can kind of do this individually, uh, unlike the specified voicing, which is going to apply to the whole uh, part all at once, this can be done on a measure by measure basis. So if you have it set up where, you know, 12 measures has it this way and from three notes you want this one. And then after measure 12, it sort of, sort of shifts so that from three notes you want the third line for this horn part. You can see how you can get uh, very specific about this uh, extracting the, these parts. And if you kind of use this correctly and smartly, you can kind of make uh, short work of this, uh, of this whole process. Now, of course, there is some housekeeping to deal with when you're doing this. Obviously, you don't want all of these uh, text blocks in the individual parts, so it's easy enough to just kind of delete them. And in a few processes, you end up with the correct lines in each of these eight horn parts, or each of these four horn parts, which is really kind of cool. 
What's really kind of nifty, and now I'm just going to go down to the trumpet lines here, is that these uh, voicings that the, the TG Tools uh, plugin considers also considers layers simultaneously. So uh, it doesn't matter if the voice is you know a separate layer like it is here. In this case, uh, trumpet one is layer one, two is two, three is three. But in this one, we have two and three sharing layer two. It doesn't matter. The, the plugin counts from the top to the bottom, whether it's in layers or not. So the top line is always going to be the first voice. The second line, whether it's in layer one or two, is going to be the second voice. So again, this will allow us to parse these two measures out um, perfectly well um, just by uh, using this, uh, this plugin. Now, with this particular setup, I'm going to show you something else in this uh, plugin. We're going to go to the More section. And I'll, t I'll talk about the secondary layer, inherit articulation, slurs, et cetera, in a second. But you do have to pay attention to this option here, ignore layers uh, for cue notes. And you have three and four selected here. Now, a lot of people will use layers three and four to have cues. And occasionally, you may not want to eliminate the cue. So if you have uh, this plugin ignoring layers three and four, it will ignore layers three and four, and it won't, it, it won't uh, eliminate them from the selection. In this case, I am using layer three as part of the tr for the, for the trumpet three here, so I don't want to ignore this because I want to eliminate it when it needs to get eliminated. So in this case, I'm just going to change this to four only, so that uh, layer three will process appropriately within this plugin. There's also this option here: secondary layers inherit articulation slurs, etc. Now, with this checked, if you notice, I've got layer two over here. Trumpet two has two two staccato notes, but I did not put the staccato notes in layer three. Now, when I start doing the uh, third trumpet here, what should happen is the the staccato notes are actually going to get transferred to the third layer here because they're shared rhythms, and uh, and, and it's just that's what the plugin will do, which is kind of neat. So anyway, going back here, what we want to do uh, for trumpet one is we want to simply extract voice line number one. And in this case, the voice line number one is going to be the top line all the way through. And in this third measure, I even have a whole rest indicating that trumpet one is not playing. So it is going to consider that whole rest part of voice line number one. So just simply uh, set up like this, we can ch check go. And it will give me exactly the trumpet one part that I want. Now, it does some weird, funky things with rest sometimes. You can see that it actually combined that uh, half rest and the quarter rest into a single dotted half rest, which is totally inappropriate. But that you can fix manually. Uh, but I'm going to show you something else in a, a couple minutes um, that's related to the pro version of the plugin that will kind of uh, eliminate that problem. In the trumpet two part, now here, basically what I'm going to do is I can just use the standard setup here and just select two. And again, it's going to parse this out correctly. The second voice is the second layer. The second voice is the first line of the second layer here. And the second voice is the bottom line of the first layer here. And again, the middle voice here. So uh, all in one shot, it will get this absolutely correct for uh, trumpet three or for trumpet two rather. And then let's see if trumpet three is going to work. Make sure that this option is checked for secondary layers, and we'll see if this works. And again, all I need to do is the standard setup here with uh, extracting voice line number three. And you click go, and there you go. And you can see that it actually did select the, um, uh, the staccato marks and put it there. And of course, this plugin moves everything, all the layers, to layer one, because that's where you're eventually going to want to have all of these notes, which makes a lot of sense. And of course, there's still going to be some cleanup to do here. Obviously, all of these markings are going to have to be removed from the um, from each individual line. Obviously, you don't need three dynamic markings on every staff. You just need the one that's relevant. So, you know, you will have to do a little bit of house cleaning on some of this, which I'll just do really quickly for you. Let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. Put that in place. And there you go. Again, in just a few processes, you can turn this into the appropriate um, extracted parts for uh, trumpets one, two, and three. Now, there is a pro version of this plugin, and I'm just going to go over here. Actually, you know what? Let me do this. Let me recopy the trumpet one, two, three, in, just into the trumpet one part here for a second. And let's go into the TG Tools plugin menu that I have. This is the, the full suite of plugins and exists in the parts uh, section here. Process Extracted Parts is the first one. 
And this window looks exactly the same. And in fact, all of the options are exactly the same between the light version and the pro version. The only difference in the pro version is that you have this more button here. And when you check this, you get some uh, interesting extra options. Now in the light version, all of these settings are set up exactly like this, which is the default setup but you can choose to ignore certain things in the process. So if you wanted to not reset the flip ties, you can uncheck that. If you wanted to not clear the uh, horizontal note displacements, all of this you know, sort of advanced stuff that you may or may not need. Now, one thing that I do find interesting is that it does have this option here for optimizing rests and it is checked. But if we uncheck that, and I'm just gonna go over to this part, and run this plugin with that unchecked. And we do have to make sure that we're not ignoring layer uh, three, set up that way. Uh, so with that option unchecked for optimize uh, rests and we press go, now it won't combine that, uh, that half rest and that quarter rest into a dotted half rest. So that little option, unchecking that option actually fixes uh, some things like that. All right, so that's the uh, process extracted parts uh, pro version. It's not really all that much different than the one that comes with Finale, but there's a couple extra things uh, that are really handy to do. All right, and so that's all there is to the TG Tools process extracted parts. Like I said, it's really important if you're going to be doing some uh, voiced parts and you're just you know overwhelming that logic in the uh, manage parts window for the specify voicing. Um, that little plugin will really help that process of uh, parsing those out into those dummy staffs. Incidentally, you can also use these if you're extracting parts because you can extract uh, separate files for horns five through eight and then use that on those extra files as well. So that's you know totally usable in that context as well. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's where the name of this plugin came from, the TG Tools process extracted parts part of it, because the linked parts weren't always in Finale. So the uh, way we had to do this was extracting parts. So this plugin was built for that uh, process in particular, and these TG Tool plugins have been around for quite a while. So anyway, speaking of extracted parts, if you're following along in the missing linked parts videos, that's where we're going to next. I'm going to talk about the difference between extracting parts and linking parts. So that will be coming up next. Otherwise, I appreciate you joining me. Thanks for watching. As always, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you soon on the next video.